Hi, I'm Lyndon White. I'm here today to talk about EXPR tools and how it can be used to facilitate metaprogramming via reflection. So originally we were using macro tools, split def and combined def. Credit to Cedric St. Jean for those. Uh, Curtis noticed uh, several edge cases and did a bunch of work at the start of last year to make EXPR tools .split def. At the end of last year, I added Signature, which is most of what we'll talk about today. So there are many ways in Julia to declare a function that um, they're all quite similar. Uh, you can use them for different things. Uh, I've shown eight there. If you add in all of the possibilities of phoretic arguments and constructors, um, there are quite a few different uh, service forms that all boil down to declaring a method. So let's say I want to make some decorator macros like this log trace macro that I'd put before a function, uh, which would make it automatically print out the name of the function and its arguments whenever the function's entered. I'd like to work for all the different combinations of ways to declare a function. So how would I write this to split def and combine def? Uh, we'll go into the details after, but the high level, here's our macro. Uh, we start up by calling split def, which gives us some dictionary. Um, we're going to generate the code that's going to print the name, and then we're going to modify the body element of that dictionary to print out the name and then run the previous body. Before we'll finally call combine def, which will give us the code that the macro will run. And you can see here that it works. My foo, bar, and quarks all printed out the appropriate outputs. So, what did split def do? Split def gave us a dictionary that separated out the arguments the body, um, the name of the function, etc. cetera. Um, combined def is inverse. So combined def took such a dictionary and gave us back a AST for the function. Finally, uh, you may have spotted args tuple expert. Um, so that's a helper that takes in a dictionary and extracts out just the names of the arguments. So it ships off all of the like type constraints. Um, so that's how that worked. So now to think about automating the delegation pattern. So in Julia, we have what people commonly call a delegation pattern. Um, it's part of this whole inheritance via composition thing, uh, where you'll have some uh, field that you've wrapped and you're going to delegate your methods to it. So you'll like recall the method on that field. Um, I'm pretty sure there's not actually one pattern where you just simply recall uh, onto that field, but um, like there are 12 variants, but uh, by using metaprogramming, you can write whatever variant you need. Uh, so that's gonna be fine. Um, so I'll talk about how this is done. So let's think about a wrapper array, which is gonna be a tracing array. So it's gonna be like our log trace macro except for instead of us decorating its function where they're declared, uh, we want to generate overloads of all the functions so that, um, well, it will print them out whenever our uh, wrapper array is passed into them. Uh, in particular, we'd like to uh, generate a function for every function that takes a plain array as its first arguments. We'd like to make a new one that takes our wrapper array instead that's going to do this um, extra logging. So I print out a bunch of methods here. There are quite a few. Uh, so how are we going to make this? So we're going to declare a trace array. It's going to subtype abstract array. It's going to have a field, which is an abstract array that we're going to delegate everything to. Uh, we're only going to define the parent function on it. And the rest of the uh, method, like size and get index, we're going to generate those automatically. Um, so here's our generate uh, overload. So it's taking a signature. Um, I'm using the variable signature that takes in a uh, type tuple from the methods uh, m.sig field. Um, it's adding a body, which is going to, well, it's going to start with the original arguments um, that are passed in the function. It's going to call parent on them to, on the first one, to get back to the like, plain array behind it. And it's going to print out um, entering 
op args. So one of the things signature does is it names the uh, function op. Uh, so you can use that in an expression. Um, finally, it's going to modify the arguments to change the type constraints uh, so that it takes a um, trace array instead of taking the original array type. Uh, before calling combined def to actually give us the method. So to go into this, what does signature do? Signature is a lot like split def. Um, one key difference is that it takes, um, well, rather than taking the AST, it takes either the method object or the uh, sig field of that, which is a type tuple. It gives us back this dictionary. Uh, only problem is it's going to always be missing the body because we don't actually store that in the method table. Um, but we don't need the body for the kind of things we're doing, so that's not actually much of a problem. So to continue to think about how we made our wrapper array, uh, we can see what it's actually done. So if we print out what the overload generated, it's kind of a bit ugly because it's got a lot of uh, hygiene applied to it. But we can see it's copy two. Uh, it's going to take a trace around. It's going to take uh, five arguments. And like we intended, it uh, is going to take the parent of the first argument and use the rest of the arguments or print them out. So we can then go and like loop over all our methods and trigger to overload in all of them. And we can see that having done this, this all works. So here I'm calling a broadcasted add, and we can see that the things that were called in this that took an array were size and get index. Similarly, you can see me doing an array slice and it's calling uh, length a few times, size, and then reshape. So how does this work? In brief, uh, we're inspecting the method table. Um, so if we look at the method table for copy two, uh, we can see this sig field that I mentioned. Uh, it's a, a union all type over tuples, uh, parametric on T. Um, and then we can go and we can interrogate it further. And we can see that actually the second argument to that type tuple um, was a union all of arrays, uh, which was an array and it was uh, took an N and N had no upper bound. Um, so you can look at these things. You can basically like to send down this whole tree and you'll find a bunch of types and type tuples and union alls. And you can work out what is the code that actually generates these um, since they are created by some Julia code. Um, and so that's what Signature does. It works out what code is required to like create these union alls, et cetera, um, and builds you up a function again. So issues with this approach. Uh, this won't uh, pick up any new methods that have been defined after you run it. So we only also we only look at surface syntax. So um, you need to be good at metaprogramming and some things are not easy to express in metaprogramming. And finally, using this in the first place, it's kind of just subverting what a good reasonable expensive API would do. So to wrap things up, ESPR tools makes it easy to metaprogram your method definitions. You can use reflection to power your metaprogramming. And like nebula.jl, you could define several hundred methods in about hundred lines of code. Should you? I don't know. It's up to you.